In the high-pressure world of naval aviation, few situations are as critical as encountering a missile on your tail. It's a moment of intense focus, where split-second decisions and razor-sharp execution can mean the difference between a triumphant return and a fiery demise. For a Navy fighter pilot, facing a locked-on missile triggers a well-rehearsed sequence. The pilot's mind races through a whirlwind of calculations and memories. What type of missile is it? Can a fighter jet withstand a missile hit? What are the escape routes for the pilot? Imagine hurtling through the sky, adrenaline thrumming through your veins as a crimson lock-on warning paints your visor red. In the high-pressure world of fighter pilots, few situations are as heart-stopping as having a missile hot on your tail. But before the fighter flight instincts take over, a cool head needs to assess the threat. And in this aerial dogfight, the enemy comes in three distinct flavors. First, we have the heat-seeking Viper. This one is like a hungry serpent drawn to warmth. Heat-seeking missiles like the AIM-9 Sidewinder hone in on the infrared signature of your jet's engine. Picture a fiery red streak, its sensors burning with the desire to turn your aircraft into a smoldering wreck. These close-range predators excel in dogfights, while their agility mirrors your every turn and dive. Secondly, there are the radar-guided wolves. Unlike the visceral heatseeker, radar-guided missiles like the AIM-120 AMRAM are methodical hunters. They rely on radio signals to track your every move, painting a cold, calculated picture of your position on their screens. Think of them as robotic wolves, sniffing out your blip on the vast electronic landscape. They can strike from afar, making them a constant threat even beyond visual range. Finally, the Anti-Radiation Assassin. While the first two missiles target the aircraft itself, the Anti-Radiation Missile like the AGM-88 Harm takes a different approach. It hunts enemy radar systems like those guiding anti-aircraft guns or tracking incoming fighters. It's a silent assassin, slipping past defenses to take out the eyes and ears of the enemy before the real fight begins. For pilots facing heavily defended airspace, these missiles are lifesavers, clearing a path for them to engage their targets without being picked off by unseen threats. But what happens when they do get picked off? The outcome of such a chase hinges on a complex interplay of factors, with distance being a critical but not absolute determinant. A skilled pilot with a well-equipped plane can overcome a distance disadvantage through cunning tactics and quick thinking. Yet the ever-closing jaws of the missile ensure that every meter counts, making distance a precious commodity. High-G turns are the quintessential evasive maneuver. Imagine a fighter jet whipping through the air, tracing tight loops and barrel rolls that would make even the most seasoned roller coaster enthusiast bonch. These rapid changes in directions, often exceeding 9 Gs, nine times the force of gravity, play havoc with a missile's tracking system. Heat-seeking missiles in particular, struggling to maintain lock on a target that's constantly changing its thermal signature. But high G turns are more than a brute force for skilled pilots. They understand the fine balance between speed, turn radius, and g-force tolerance, and push the aircraft to its limits while maintaining control. However, these maneuvers are not magic bullets, and the vastness of the sky itself often becomes an additional weapon in the pilot's arsenal. Sudden dives and climbs exploit the limitation of a missile's guidance system. Against radar-guided missiles, a sharp descent can quickly put terrain or even the curvature of the Earth between the pilot and the threat. For heat-seeking missiles, a climb can alter the aircraft's heat signature, throwing the missile off track. But altitude changes come with their own risks. Descending too low can limit maneuverability and increase the threat from ground-based defenses. Climbing too high, on the other hand, thins the air, reducing engine thrust and making the aircraft sluggish. Finding the sweet spot is the key to this high-stakes game of hide-and-seek. This is why sometimes the best defense is a good bluff. Jinking, a series of unpredictable rapid changes in direction, keeps the missile guessing. Imagine a fighter weaving through the air like a bee dodging swatters, its erratic movement forcing the missile to constantly adjust its course. 
burning precious fuel and reducing its chances of success. Terrain can also be a valuable ally. Hugging coastlines or skimming mountain ridges can use the Earth's natural features as shields. Evasive maneuvers are just one part of the equation, though. When a missile paints your aircraft with its ravenous gaze, brute force cannot be your only option. You can become a ghost in the machine, a shadow flitting through the sky armed with a repertoire of countermeasures. This is the language of chaff, flares, and ECM. Chaff Among the available countermeasures, chaff is recognized as a meticulously designed means to disrupt radar guidance systems. These aluminum strips, precisely cut and shaped for optimal reflectivity, are deployed in coordinated salvos to create a temporary blizzard of false targets. This deliberate metallic cloud overwhelms the missile's radar seeker, temporarily breaking its lock and providing the aircraft with a crucial moment of respite. However, effective deployment of chaff requires precise timing and resource management. Prematurely deployed chaff can reveal the aircraft's position to other threats while possibly not sufficiently confusing the target missile. Conversely, deploying chaff too late can leave the aircraft vulnerable to continued tracking and engagement. Therefore, the pilot must have a keen understanding of both the missile's capabilities and vulnerabilities, as well as an intimate knowledge of the dispersion characteristics of chaff to deploy the countermeasure at the optimal moment. Flares In the cockpit, where tranquility is shattered by a single blip on the radar, a heat-seeking missile, invisible yet deadly, forces an abrupt shift from routine to survival. This predator hunts by heat, like a hungry snake in search of a warm body. To deceive it, the pilot has a tool, the flare. Flares are fiery countermeasures, creating an intense heat source stronger than the jet engines. Deployed at just the right moment, they form a misleading heat beacon, a distracting signal in the sky. The missile, confused by this sudden surge of heat, may lose its lock, granting the pilot precious seconds to evade or counterattack. But the timing is critical. Flares released too early burn out before the missile detects them. Flares launched too late leave the aircraft exposed, a bright target against the dark sky. The pilot becomes a maestro of fire, launching flares at the perfect tempo to slip past the predator's graze. However, here's the issue. You don't have an unlimited supply of flares. Use all of them, and the aircraft stands alone, vulnerable in the chilling silence. But in those stolen moments of heat, the pilot buys time, a chance to escape, fight back, or live to see another day. ECM In aerial combat, stealth can be the difference between life and death. When when radar paints a menacing blip on the cockpit screen, indicating an impending missile launch, Silence is no longer an option. This is where Electronic Countermeasures, or ECM, take center stage. ECM encompasses a diverse arsenal of tools, each targeting specific vulnerabilities in enemy sensors and guidance systems. Jammers, the electronic wizards of this battlefield, bombard the airwaves with false signals, creating a cacophony of noise that drowns out the missile's radar lock. Deception takes another form with spoofers. Digital ventriloquists, who mimic your aircraft's signature, create phantom targets that dance alongside the real one. To the missile, it's like trying to pick out a single whisper in a crowded stadium. The confusion buys the pilot precious seconds to execute evasive maneuvers or deploy other countermeasures. But ECM is also a balancing act. Overuse can reveal your position to other threats, while relying solely on it can be a dangerous gamble. Effective deployment requires a deep understanding of enemy systems, their strengths and weaknesses, and the perfect timing to unleash the right countermeasure at the right moment. Ejection If nothing works, there is an ultimate attempt to save the life of a pilot. Ejection But ejecting from a fighter jet isn't a cinematic thrill ride. It's a brutal, high-stakes maneuver reserved for the direst situations. Recognizing an incoming missile's lethal intent, the pilot slams the ejection seat handle. Explosive cartridges catapult the seat and pilot skyward at a bone-crushing 20 Gs. But that's not the end. During the ejection, the canopy shatters 
and the pilot experiences a sensory overload, a deafening roar, brutal g-force squeeze, and the cockpit vanishing into a shrinking blur. Once cleared, the seat deploys stabilizing rockets and drogue chutes to decelerate the ascent. The pilot may manually jettison the seat before the main parachute opens, offering a fragile hope against gravity. Steering with cords, the pilot guides the descent towards a safe landing, praying for forgiving terrain. A smooth field is preferable to unforgiving mountains or frigid water. Can a fighter jet withstand a missile hit? Fighter jets undergo extensive design and engineering to enhance their resilience against missile impacts. The ability of a fighter jet to endure a missile hit is contingent upon a multitude of factors including the nature of the missile, the specific location of the impact, and the aircraft's unique design and construction. In the world of modern aviation, fighter jets are equipped with state-of-the-art protective measures, encompassing advanced armor, structural reinforcements, and redundant systems. These elements collectively contribute to bolstering the aircraft's survivability during combat engagements. The incorporation of advanced armor in fighter jet design serves as a primary line of defense against missile strikes. This armor is strategically placed to mitigate the potential damage caused by the impact, absorbing and dispersing kinetic energy to minimize the risk to critical components. Structural reinforcements further fortify the aircraft, ensuring that it can withstand the intense forces generated by a missile strike. These reinforcements are cleverly integrated into the airframe enhancing overall durability and integrity. By having backup systems in place, fighter jets can maintain essential capabilities even after sustaining a missile hit, thereby increasing their chances of survival during combat scenarios. The effectiveness of a fighter jet's survivability is also tied to the type of missile encounters. Various missiles possess distinct capabilities, ranging from explosive warheads to advanced guidance systems. Fighter jets are engineered to counteract specific missile threats with tailored defensive mechanisms that can either evade or withstand the incoming projectiles. The continuous evolution of missile technology necessitates ongoing advancements in fighter jet design to address emerging threats effectively. The location of impact is a critical determinant in assessing the aftermath of a missile hit on a fighter jet. Different areas of the aircraft have varying degrees of vulnerability, and the design accounts for this by prioritizing critical components for protection. Engine compartments, fuel systems, and avionics are among the crucial areas that demand heightened fortification to ensure the aircraft's ability to function after sustaining damage. Despite these advanced protective measures, the impact of a missile hit remains a substantial threat to both the aircraft and its pilot and, in many instances, the pilot may still need to resort to ejecting from the fighter jet to guarantee their safety. Can a jet outrun a missile? While fighter jets are equipped with an array of defensive mechanisms to evade missiles, the concept of outrunning a missile is generally not feasible. The dynamics of missile technology and the high speeds involved make it challenging for a jet to simply outpace an incoming missile. The speed of missiles, especially advanced ones with supersonic or hypersonic capabilities, surpasses the maximum speeds attainable by most fighter jets. Because of this, relying solely on speed to outrun a missile is not a practical strategy. Instead, fighter jets focus on employing tactics such as sharp turns, rolls, and changes in altitude to outmaneuver and confuse incoming missiles. The design and development of fighter jets prioritize a comprehensive approach to defense against missiles. This includes incorporating advanced avionics, electronic warfare systems, and countermeasure dispensers to disrupt the guidance systems of incoming missiles. Additionally, stealth technology is employed to reduce the aircraft's radar cross-section, making it more challenging for missiles to lock onto the target. While outrunning may not be a feasible strategy, the combination of advanced defensive technologies and skilled pilot maneuvers significantly enhances a fighter jet's survivability in the face of missile threats. Now that you've seen how complex and intense it is for a Navy pilot to evade a missile, what would you do if you were in the cockpit? 
Would you rely on your skills to dodge the missile? Or would you brace for the worst and be ready to pull the ejection handle? Leave your answer in the comments below and tell us why. Thanks for watching this video and if you liked it, don't forget to leave a like and share this video and subscribe to our channel. Oh yeah, and send some good vibes to those pilots too and leave a blue heart in the comments. See you in the next video. Bye for now.